Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're going to be roughing in this two gang switch box. This is in a bathroom, so we're going to have both a fan and a light controlled from this particular box. So we're going to have power coming in the bottom right here, and then two wires going out, or two cables rather, that will go to the lights as well as to a bathroom fan. So let's go ahead and get started roughing in this box. I have my cables pulled to location and the box has already been installed, but just real quick, uh, your standard height for placing uh, lights or receptacles in most cases is going to be 48 inches to the top of the box. So 48 inches up and then we went ahead and attached our two gang plastic box to the 2x4 stud. Now I do prefer plastic most of the time, however if you want to use fiberglass or metal you certainly can do so. If you do decide to use metal, the thing that you'll have to keep in mind is that you will need to add a separate grounding pigtail to attach the actual box. You can see I've written here on these wires, this one is going to be going to our bathroom fan and this one right here is what goes to the lights. This is where our power is coming into the box from a receptacle down below. And this is our constant power wire that's going to be feeding these light switches. So this is not switched by anything, it's just constant power that's feeding into the box. And this constant power is coming from this receptacle box right down below it. So we basically ran our power through our receptacle boxes first, and then finally up into our switch. As I mentioned, this is in a bathroom, so all of this circuitry will be protected by GFCI and AFCI breakers. I'll link to uh, dual function breakers in the description as well as any other related products that are needed for this project. The reason we didn't pull the cable into the box is that we're actually going to go ahead and trim the sheathing off before we pull it in. So we just have to estimate about where this is going to come into the box and then we take our sheathing strippers. These have a 12-2 or 14-2 uh, sheathing cutter built into them. I line that up with the 12 2 in this case. This is 12 gauge wire and it will be a 20 amp circuit. Squeeze that on the sheathing there and then we should just have to pull this and that outer sheathing will slide right off, which is really, really slick. And then we'll remove this little bit of paper that protects the bare ground conductor. Now you might think this looks a little bit too long, but you'll see in a minute that we're actually going to put that, that extra wire to use. Now it's required that we need to have at least a quarter inch of sheathing showing inside of the box. It looks like we nailed that pretty much perfectly. You need to anchor the cable where it exits the box within 12 inches of a box that has a built-in clamp. Or if you're working with a box that does not have a clamp, which is fairly uncommon anyway, but if that's the case, you need to anchor it within 8 inches. Now we'll go ahead and strip the sheathing off of these next two cables. Now personally, I'm not that concerned about which exact space you bring each cable into. So we brought our power in the bottom of the box. We're going to be bringing our lights off of the right hand side of the box over here because the first switch is going to be our lights and the second switch is going to be our fan. Uh, but if you have a preference for how you uh, run your cables into the box, like if you always use the bottom left for the incoming power and the top left for outgoing power, that kind of a thing, if you develop some kind of a uh, methodology to how you want to uh, basically pull the cables into the box. You certainly can do so, but there's no specific requirement in the code that says, oh, you have to always pull the power into this exact uh, location in the box. As you can see right up here, we already have a cable staple, so this is adequately anchored in place now. So now that we have all of our conductors exposed, we're going to deal with our ground wires first. So we're going to take our hot and neutrals and bend those out of the way towards the outside of the box while keeping the ground conductors towards the inside of the box. So right there we have all of our ground wires. Now we got one that's a lot longer and these two are a little bit longer than needed. So what we're going to do is trim those two off. What I like to shoot for is about six inches past the face of the box 
and I use the handles of my uh, cutter to determine approximately where that is. And now I'm going to cut off the two conductors that are shorter, just like that. Now we're going to take our greeny wire nut, a lot of guys will call them, but it's basically just a grounding wire nut with a hole in the end, and we're going to slide that over our longer conductor. Now you could use a standard wire connector, you don't have to use these green ones, but what it does is it automatically creates at least one pigtail with minimal effort. So you can see we have one pigtail right here that we're going to be able to attach to the grounding screw of one of these two uh, devices or two light switches. But we do need a, an additional uh, grounding pigtail, so we're going to add one more into this bundle here before I tighten this down. So I've got just another scrap piece of 12 gauge bare copper. I'm going to bend these off to kind of a 90 degree angle off to the side to make it easier to tighten and align these, these wires. So once I get those lined up, I can simply take my greeny wire nut and tighten it just like so. I like to twist it back about this far and give it a little bit more on the grounding conductors but not too far. If you wind these way back into the box, it can create difficulties in the future if you ever have to work on something in the box. Now we'll simply take and roll this into the back of the box, just like so. And you can see we ended up with one pigtail coming out the end of that green wire nut. And the second one is right over here. So we have our, our two grounding wires that are going to be ready to go and connect to our switches once we're ready to install them. Now I'll go ahead and clip these off at about six inches past the face of the box. Now we're ready to move on to our neutral conductors. Uh, the neutrals are not switched, so pretty much all the neutrals tie together the same way that we just did with the ground wires. Now if you're putting in standard switches, you likely will not need a neutral wire for either one of the switches. So we could just tie all of these together, roll them back into the box, and call it a day. However, if you're going to put in any sort of a smart switch or a switch that requires a neutral wire, like a Wi-Fi switch or something similar, you do need to have a neutral. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create two neutral pigtails to go along with our grounding pigtails so that we have the option of using them if necessary. As I mentioned, this is optional. If you're just going to use standard snap switches, then you will not need to add neutral pigtails for switches. Start by trimming these off to six inches past the box. Now I'll go ahead and strip back about three quarters of an inch on each one of these conductors. Now right here I've got a larger scrap of 12 gauge uh, neutral wire and we're going to go ahead and strip about three quarters of an inch off of either end of this. So what we'll do is just tie this in with these and then we'll just clip off whatever we have that's extra and we'll automatically have two neutral pigtails ready to go. On this connection we're going to be having five 12 gauge conductors so it's important that we take a peek and make sure that it is indeed rated to handle five 12 gauge conductors which these red wire nuts are. The yellow ones would not be quite big enough for this application. 88.4% of the people in the last 28 days that watched my videos didn't subscribe to the channel. So if you guys are interested in trade related topics like electrical, make sure you take a second, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notifications. Now we'll do the same thing that we did with the ground wires, kind of bend them off to an angle like that. Take our two additional conductors that are going to be our pigtails if we decide to install smart switches. Get these all lined up, and we're going to go ahead and pre-twist. And the reason I like to pre-twist when you have more cables like this is that it seems like when you put your wire nut on there, it just has a difficult time of getting a hold of each conductor evenly. Now I think it would be fine if you decided not to pre-twist it overall. I don't think it's uh, going to necessarily fail immediately if you don't. But we'll just go ahead and do it and you can kind of decide for yourself what you prefer. So we'll take our lineman pliers and just go straight onto the ends of these cables and just start to twist them. And you'll actually be surprised at how easy this is. It kind of looks like you're having to put a lot of force onto the cable with the lineman player, but actually it works pretty fantastic. It's pretty amazing. Now that we have them twisted together good, we'll take and trim off a little bit of excess. We only want about a half inch of 
conductor exposed there or the wire nut won't be able to fully cover it. Now as you tighten this down, make sure that the collar of the wire nut goes all the way past the insulation on the conductors. Now we can do the same thing as we did with the ground wires and fold slash roll this back into the box. Now we can take our neutral pigtails and push them over to their respective sides. And then we'll go ahead and trim these off. So now we're left with our two hot conductors that go to our lights in our fan. And then we have our hot conductor coming into the box, which is supplying constant power. So this one wire right here has to supply power to both of the switches. So we're going to have to create a pigtail for this particular one. But then for these top two, they don't need to be pigtailed to anything because the top screw or the other connection on each of the switches is going to connect directly to this and this wire. At this point, it might not be a bad idea to just go ahead and designate uh, which conductor is which for the lights and the fan. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to slide it over the hot conductor. So this is where uh, the power is going to be going out directly to the lights. And this one's going to be for the fan. You can label your wires in different ways. Let me know if you label them at all. Generally, with a simple box like this, you might not even need to label it. Uh, but depending on who you ask, you might get a different answer. So I'll keep those up out of the way for now. And we're going to deal with this pigtail. So again, we'll trim it back to about six inches. And now we'll go ahead and strip about three quarters of an inch off of that. And then I got two scrap pieces of 12 gauge wire that we're going to use for our pigtails. Bend this off to the right. With three wires like this, probably don't need to pre-twist, but we'll go ahead and just do it anyway. Specifically, the instructions say to clip it off uh, for 14 to 12 gauge wires, about 9 sixteenths. So, slightly over a half inch. So we'll just leave about that much. Take our connector, thread it on, and go ahead and roll this into the box. And one of these needs to come out with each set of pigtails. You can see how having a little bit of extra wire uh, just kind of available makes it easier to end up with the correct amount outside of the box. So we're going to have to cut a little bit of extra off here, but it's way better than having like a predetermined length that you're then going to have to extend or whatever, or just have wires that are a little bit too short. Next, we'll simply take the wire for our lights put that down here on the right hand side since that's where we want the light switch to be and then we take the wire for our fan put that on the left hand side since that's where we want it to be now we'll go ahead and trim these off to the same length now at this point you simply could roll these back into the box and call it a day what I'd like to be able to do is turn the power on after I've finished my rough-in wiring to make sure that the breakers don't trip so in order to do that, we're going to do a couple more steps here. We're going to connect these two wires, the black wires, on for either switch. And what that's going to do is it's going to simulate our switch just being turned on. So we'll go ahead and strip back about a half inch on each of our hot conductors. Next, we're just going to connect these black wires, simulating that our switch is turned on. And I'm just going to thread it down a little bit. I'm not going to twist the conductor going back this way because these do need to get connected to the screws or clamped terminals of the switch that we'll be installing later. So now our switches are basically turned on. Now to be safe we need to safe off all of the current carrying conductors which includes these neutrals. So we'll just take a couple more wire nuts and safe those off. Now what I like to do is take my ground wire just wrap it around just a little bit like so. I should note that you can make these grounding pigtails uh, out of insulated green wire so if we wanted to these could have been 12 gauge green insulated wire but we decided to just go ahead and use the bare copper because that's what was available to us. So our rough-in is completed for our lights and for our bathroom fan. All we need to do now is simply roll these back into the box like so and now we're ready to go ahead and do the drywall and once the drywall and paint and all the final details have been completed we'll just come back pull those out install our switches and away we go
Most likely we won't be using those neutral pigtails, but they are there in case we wanted a Wi-Fi switch or some other kind of a smart switch that requires a neutral. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions on how this could have been done differently or how you would prefer to see it done, definitely leave those in the comment section underneath this video. Also, if you haven't yet, take a moment and just click that subscribe button if you're interested in trade-related videos. That's what I focus on here on this particular channel. So definitely would love to have you stick around if you are interested. All right, I'll put a couple of relevant videos here on the screen for you guys to choose from should you want to continue learning with me. So I'll see you guys over there in just a few seconds. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're getting a lot done in your project and that everything turns out exactly as you had hoped it would. All right, we'll talk to you guys right over there.